Let's start with a warning this time. So here it is. If you're an advanced WooCommerce user or mid-level WooCommerce user, then probably this video is a bit boring for you. So be advised, which means you are free to leave right now. But for all others, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up the WooCommerce and what are the main things you should set up or take a closer look at. We're gonna start with a blank site like the one you see on the screen right now. And we're gonna end up with something like this one here with a shop. An option to add products to the cart. View the cart. Go to the checkout. Place the order and basically do whatever we want with our site. So if you're interested then jump in. Now in order to install a WooCommerce you're gonna go to the plugins Add new, search for WooCommerce, and you'll see this one here. Press on install now button, and after that, click on activate button. A setup wizard will appear, and now let's set it up. Let's set up our region. I'm gonna choose my country. Enter shop address, postal code, city, and email address. I'm gonna go to the next page. It asks me whether I would like to share a non-sensitive data. I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to select my industry, for example, electronics. I'm going to sell only physical products. But if you sell downloads or subscriptions and select those here, but as you see, those are the paid add-ons. Let's go to the next page. How many products I will sell? Do I sell anywhere else? If yes, and choose one, I'm not gonna select one. Now there is a pre-selected checkbox that recommended business features to my site. There are a bunch of stuff here. I'm not gonna do that because I don't want to use a jetpack or mailboat or Google listings and ads and so on. Bunch of extra plugins I just don't need. Next, whether should I choose a team? I'm going to do it later, therefore I'm going to skip this step here. So, first thing is done. Now let's take a look at the next thing you should do. Go to the settings, general, and now add your site title. For example, electronic shop or whatever it is. You would like your users to create accounts, then select this one here. Anyone can register. If you don't do that, then your users can't create their accounts and they won't be able to see the purchase history. Select a new user default role, customer. Select your site language, time zone, date format, time format, and the day your week starts on. Save changes. Next part, let's go to the reading. And as you see, we have to choose our home page, otherwise, the blog page will be shown as a home page. So, let's go to the pages, and you'll see that WooCommerce created a card checkout, my account page, and the shop page. I'm gonna create a new page, rename it as home, for example. I'm gonna publish it. Next, I'm gonna create a blog page. This will be the page that contains all my blog posts. Now I'm going to go back to the settings, reading. I'm going to choose a static page as my home page. I'm going to select this home here. And as a po post page, it's going to be a blog. Now pay attention that there is also a search engine visibility checkbox here. If you're creating your site on a staging area, then select this one here. If you publish your site on live server, then be sure to uncheck it. Otherwise, Google won't be able to index your site. So let's save it. And next one, I'm going to go to the permalinks and I'm going to choose my permalinks st structure. Choose this post name. And this will be the most search engine optimization friendly structure. Here you can set up your product category slugs and tag slugs, also a product slug. I'm going to leave them as they are. That is default settings. Save changes. And now let's go back to the WooCommerce and open up the shop settings. Now one more thing you should know about. 
That is, there is a very thorough WooCommerce documentation page. Take a look at this URL here. So at any given time, if you need some help with setting up your products or categories or whatever it is, just go to the documentation page and you'll get your answers. Also, there is a documentation in French, in Spanish and in Portuguese language. And it's free to use for everyone. Okay, back to the WooCommerce settings. At the initial setup, we entered our store address. You can change them here, but now the important part. Selling location, where would you like to sell? Whether it's to all countries, sell to all countries except, for example, Algeria, or sell to specific countries. Maybe I would like to sell only to my own country, so I can select it here. Next one, shipping locations. Where would you like to ship? Since I'm going to sell only in my own country, I'm going to ship to all countries you sell to. Or ship to specific countries, ship to all countries, or disable shipping and shipping calculations. So if you would like to disable shipping, you can do it here. I set it up in a way that I'm going to sell it in my own country and I'm going to ship only to my own country. Default customer location, whether it's shop country region, that is this one here, geolocate, or geolocate with page caching support. You can also select a no location by default. I'm going to select shop country region. Now let's enable tax rates and calculations. If you don't use taxes on your shop, you don't have to do it. But if you scroll up, you'll see there is no taxes settings here. It's because you haven't enabled it. Enable it here, scroll down, save changes, and you'll see that there is a taxes tab here. We're going to take a look at it next. But before we go over there, let's take a look at some other settings here. First one is a currency. Choose your currency, currency position, right with space, left, right, left with space. In my country, it's common to use right with space, so I'm going to select this one here. You can set up the thousand separator, dot comma, or whatever it is, decimal separator and number of decimals. I'm going to save it, and in order to finish my main shop setup, I'm going to go to the products and verify that the shop page is shop. Weight unit is kilogram and dimension unit is centimeter. You can change them here if you would like to do that. Also, if I would like to disable reviews and uh, I don't want any reviews on my site, I'm going to deselect this checkbox here. Save changes and my main setup is done. Next, I'm going to take a look at the inventory. And under this inventory menu, you can enable or disable the stock management. That means if you would like your shop to calculate the stock quantities, then verify that this one here is enabled. If you don't use any stock management, then just disable it and save it. So let's enable it and let's see what we can set up here. Hold stock in minutes. That means if someone goes to the cart page, completes the order without paying, then the order status is pending. And this 60 minute means that within this time, the stock is held for you. After the 60 minutes, the quantities will be released once again for others to purchase. Next on notifications. If you would like to receive low stock not notifications, then enable this one here or out of stock notifications. Low stock threshold is two for this site. You can reduce or increase it. What does it mean is if the product quantity is two or lower, then you will receive the notification that, hey guys, take a look at this or that product. There is a low stock alert over here. Out of stock threshold, you will be notified if the product is out of stock. If you don't want those notifications, then just disable them. Next one is a rather important one, out of stock visibility. I know a bunch of WooCommerce users who don't know that these settings exist. If I select this one, then all the products that are out of stocks, they are disabled from the catalog. That means they are not deleted, but users can't see them. If the stock amount is one or more, 
then they automatically are visible once again. So if you would like to do that, then select this one. If you don't do that, then out of stock products are also visible in the catalog. Next one, stock display format. What does it mean is whether you would like to display the stock amount on your site. 23 in stock It's because always show quantity. If I choose only show quantity remaining in stock when low, that means if the low stock threshold is activated, only then the stock amount is visible. Never show or only show remaining in stock when low. So you can choose what you display here. If everything is done, then just save changes. Next one, if you're selling downloadable products, then file download method here, access restriction. For example, you require a login for downloads, then activate this one here. Grant access to download products after the payment, it would be wise. Open downloadable files in browser, instead saving them to the device, you can select it here. And you append unique string to file name for security. Next, let's set up some WooCommerce taxes. Once again, if you don't see this tab here, then that means you have to enable this checkbox here. If it's done, go to the taxes and there are some options for you. First, whether you enter the prices that contains tax or not. So yes, I will enter inclusive of tax or no, I will enter exclusive of tax. I'm gonna set up in a way that prices already include taxes. Calculate tax based on customer shipping address, customer billing address or shop base address. I'm going to set up shop base address, but you can do it as you like. Shipping tax class based on cart items, standard rates, reduced rates or zero rates. I'm going to select as standard. But once again, all those settings may vary based on your country and your legislation. Whether you would like to round tax at subtotal level instead of per line, play with these settings if needed. If you don't need any additional tax classes, then delete these or add your own. For example, let's imagine that in my country, taxes for books category have a different taxes than other products. Next one, display prices in shop excluding tax or including tax. Display prices during cart and checkout once again, including or excluding. Display price suffix, display suffix. If you over here, you'll see what will it means. You can enter your price and it displays suffix, includes tax or excludes tax. You can do that here. Now let's save it and let's set up some standard rates. Country code, insert road, for example, Estonia, tax rate is 20%. If I sell it to other countries, for example, Finland, I'm going to set the country code. And for those, let's imagine it's 0%, whether the taxes has been added to the shipping and save. Now let's set up the books. Once again, insert row, Estonia, rate for books is 9%. And for Finland, it's zero. Those are the books rates or standard rates. Now, if I add a product here, I can choose tax class, whether it's standard or books. If a standard product, then this is a default tax class. But if the product is, for example, Game of Thrones, it contains the books category, then I can choose books tax class here. So basically, this is what you need to know about the taxes here. Next, let's move to the shipping options. Let's open it up. I'm going to close it down and explain something first. So in order to create the shipping options, you need to add the shipping zones. After the setup wizard, since we entered our base country, the main shipping zone has been created for us. And there is a shipping method called free shipping. I'm going to come back here in a minute or so. But first, let's take a look at the shipping options here. Whether to enable the shipping calculator on a cart page. And the shipping calculator is the one you see here. If I click on it, it opens up. I can select my country, city and postcode, update. 
and it will display me the shipping options. So if you need this, then enable it, otherwise disable. Also, you can hide the shipping costs until the address is entered. That means on the checkout page, shipping destination, whether to calculate shipping costs based on the billing address or shipping address, or you can also force shipping to the customer billing address. This is what I usually do. Next on shipping classes, if you would like to add some shipping class, then add it here, for example, demo class description if needed. Save it and I'm going to show you what will it do. So back to the shipping zones. If you have more than one shipping zone, add them here. Otherwise, open it up. Add the regions or countries. Since I sell only to Estonia, I, I can't select any other countries. Otherwise, I can add here, for example, Sweden or UK or whatever it is. Now let's add the shipping method here, flat rate, next one, local pickup, and those are the three ones that, uh, that come with the WooCommerce. If you need some other third party shipping options, then you need to install a plugin for it. Free shipping, free shipping requires valid free shipping coupon, order amount, a minimum order amount or a coupon, a minimum order amount and a coupon. The most common setup is a minimum order amount, for example, 100 euros. If the cart contains at least 100 worth of merchandise, then the free shipping has been added. Save changes, flat rate, for example, let's rename it courier. It's taxable, cost 10 euros. And if the product contains demo class, shipping class that we added, then extra cost, 5 euros will be added. This way you can use shipping classes and I'm going to show you how to add them to the products. Local pickup, if it has a cost, then add it here. If not, then leave it blank. And now back to the products. Under the shipping, you can select demo class. That means for this product, shipping is cal calculated in a way that 10 euros base cost and additional 5 euros for the shipping class. Now one more thing, you can add zones in a way that you can list them by postcodes. If you know the postcodes for the city, for example, one area of the city, the courier is 5 euros, add the postcodes here, one per line. Next add another shipping zone as the postcodes over there. And this way you can separate your shipping costs even within the region if needed. Now let's take a look at the payment settings over there. By default, WooCommerce adds you three payment options, direct bank transfer, check payments and cash and delivery, and all of those are deactivated. I'm going to activate the direct bank transfer and cash and delivery. If I need to rearrange them, then I can do by dragging and dropping them over here. And now I'm going to save changes. Direct bank transfer, give it a title here, add your explanation that will be displayed on the checkout page. This one here, instructions that will be displayed on the confirmation email and on the thank you page, add them here. Here goes your account name, account number, bank name, and additionally, if you need to add the sort code, IBAN or Swift code here, you can add m multiple accounts if needed just add them one by one and if it's done then save changes cash and delivery once again the same goes here you can enable cash and delivery only for specific shipping options for example only for flat rate if you need to add any additional shipping option for example paypal or stripe then you need to install a plugin for it but yeah by default these are the three payment options that will come with a WooCommerce. Couple of other settings for us to go through. So let's start with accounts and privacy tab here. Couple of things for you to point out first. If you would like your customers to place orders without an account, that is, they don't have to be logged in in order to purchase, then don't touch this one here. If you deselect this selection, then they have to log in. So keep it selected. If you would like your customers to log in during the checkout, then 
select this one here. If you would like to allow them to create an account during che checkout, check this one here. Also, this one is suitable. That is create account on my account page. Now take a look whether you would like your users to automatically create the usernames based on the name or email. Next, when creating an account, send the user link to their password. You can choose whether to keep it activated or not. This selection allows you to remove personal data from orders on request, remove access to downloads, or allow personal data to be removed. Next, there are two text boxes, privacy policy text and checkout privacy policy. So where do you see this one? If you go to the checkout, read your privacy policy. If someone clicks here, the privacy policy page will be opened. Now, where is the page? I'm gonna show you. Save it to wait for you to set up the privacy page. First, click here or go to the settings and privacy. There is a page, privacy policy. If you haven't set it up, then under the pages you can do it. Just select it, use this page. And if you go to the WooCommerce settings, accounts and privacy, then this one here will be shown as a privacy policy page. So much about this one here. Next, let's take a look at emails. Scroll down and from name, this there is your name or your shop name. I'm gonna add my shop name from email address. It's my domain related email address. I can add a header image and footer text. Usually I'm gonna put contact information here. If you would like to change the base color that is shown in the emails, then change these here. Next, you can activate or deactivate emails here. I'm not gonna go through all of those, but a couple of them. So this one enables the notification. If you deselect, then it's disabled. Recipients who gets the new order email. Subject, you can change it. Email heading, additional content. Same goes with those two, canceled order, failed order. You see whether it's enabled or disabled. And if you would like to customize the emails, then take a look at the description of this video. I have made a thorough video about how to customize WooCommerce emails. Under the integration, if you have maximized license, you can do that. And under the advanced, you can see whether your cart page is set up, checkout page, as you see, terms and conditions page haven't been created. This is the one user sees here. Since I haven't set it up, I'm gonna go and do that. I'm gonna add a new page, add text to it, publish it, go back to WooCommerce settings, advanced terms and conditions, select this one here and done. Those are the endpoints slugs. If you would like to change them, then you can do it. Otherwise, don't touch them. Let's save it. There are also REST API, webhooks, options, but I'm not going to tell about those. Those are for your developers. Under the features, whether you would like to enable the analytics, this section here. If you would like to enable the WooCommerce multi-channel marketing, then activate this one here. New product editor, at the time of the making of this video, this is still beta, so I'm not going to activate those. And basically, we have taken care of all of the setups, which means it's time to move on. This time I'm going to move away from here and I'm going to go to the marketing and coupons. If you also have a coupon menu here and click here, then there is a remove legacy coupon menu button. If you click on it, then it will be deactivated. All the coupons are under the marketing. So let's create a coupon here. Give it a title, for example, ABC123. There's a description for you. And now let's set up the discount type, whether it fixed card discount, percentage discount, or fi fixed product discount. Percentage gives us 20% discount. Fixed card discount will give us uh, 20 euros discount from the cart or fixed product discount will give us 20 euros from selected product price. 
Usually I'm gonna use percentage discount, so I'll leave it as it is. Whether this coupon allows free shipping, you can select this one and set the expiry date, for example, March 19. Usage restriction, minimum spend, maximum spend, whether you can use it only individually and can't be used in conjunction with other coupons. Exclude sale items, that is, if I purchase a product that is already discounted, then the coupon won't work. Here I can select the products for this coupon, which means anywhere else the coupon won't work. It works only for specific products. Or I'm going to set up the store-wide coupon, but exclude some products from this selection here. Same goes with the categories. Work with only categories or exclude categories. Or you can allow some emails. Maybe you would like to give your friend a coupon that he or she can use, then add their email addresses here and only they can use it. Next, usage limits. I allow this coupon to be used only 10 times. Only three items per time and one time per user, for example. If everything is done, I'm going to click publish and under the coupons, I'll see all the coupons that are published. And here you can see whether they have been used or not. Which concludes this part. Next part, let's take a look at the team itself. If I open my site up, you'll see that my site uses default WordPress team. It doesn't look any good so at the moment. Therefore, I'm going to install a good team. In order to do that, I'm going to go to the appearance teams. Add new. There are a bunch of good teams here, but select the one you like the most. For example, Bloxy is my go-to team. Also, Cadence is a good team. This one here and Astra. Those are three really popular good teams. I'm going to install it. Activate it. Go to the dashboard. And there is an install Bloxy Companion plugin. I'm going to install it, otherwise it won't work. So when this is done, I'm going to go to the starter sites. Now, before I install a starter site, I have made a thorough video about how to redesign your site with a Bloxy team. If you would like to modify it by yourself, then I would suggest you to take a look at this video. The description to it is in the video description at the moment. To keep it short, I'm going to install a template. There are a bunch of those here. I'm going to choose a modern shop. I can preview it here. This is the one I'm going to install. So let's import. I'm not going to use child team next. Whether I'm going to use Gothenburg, Breezy or Elementor. I'm going to use Gothenburg or Elementor. Let's imagine that this time I'm going to choose Elementor. Next, it says that it will install Elementor, WooCommerce and WP Forms contact form. OK, let's go ahead. Whether to import options, widgets and content. I'm going to import all because I can delete them later. I'm not going to do a clean install, otherwise it will delete all my content. Install. As you see, it installs required plugins, imports options, now widgets, content, now final touches and done. It took less than a minute, so Let's click on the view site button and what do you know? Within a minute, our site looks totally different. Now I'm going to go and customize it a bit because there are some things I would not like to be displayed as they are. For example, this header here, I'm going to put the logo here, menu here and social here. Next. I'm going to open up the main row. It's too high for me. I'm going to set it to 100 pixels. Top row, 30 pixels. Design background, a slight darker version. Click on the logo, select logo, upload it, add it, make it a bit bigger and publish. Now I'm going to go to the headers activate sticky functionality and for main row only. Now I have a sticky header here. Awesome, isn't it? 
Now, in order to keep it short, I'm not going to go through all the details here. Once again, take a look at the description of this video. There is a link to the full tutorial. One more thing, though, I would like to point out is if you would like to get even more features, then take a look at the Bloxy Pro version. It allows you to add wish lists, sliding cards, and so on. There is a annual plan and lifetime plan. If you take a look at the description of this video, there is also a nice 10% coupon for the Bloxy Pro version. Just follow the link, use the coupon, and you'll get the discount. Okay, now when this is out of the way, there are a couple of other things for us to do. For example, we haven't added any products here, so let's do that. If you go to the All Products page, you'll see all the products that have been added. Those are the products are imported. If I take a look at the shop page, those are here. If you would like to delete those, select all or trash it one by one. If you did it by accident, go to the trash and restore. I'm gonna delete this one here. Now, before you add any products, go to the categories page because probably you have some categories here. You would like that, for example, TV, consoles and so on. You can rearrange them one by one if needed. And pay attention that the uncategorized is a default category created by WooCommerce itself. If you would like to change the default category, then just make this one default here. And now you can delete the uncategorized category here. If you would like to add some tags, you can do it here. Also attributes, what are the attributes? For example, color, if I open it up, I can add color attributes, red, yellow, blue, and so on. Once again, I can rearrange them here. Now let's add a product by adding a new product. Give it the title, for example, Sony TV ABC123. Before I add any content, I'll show you that you can rearrange those panels here. Now let's add a content. It's a long description. What is a long description? This one here is a short description. And this one below is a long description. So long description goes here. Short description goes here. Regular price 550. Sale price 490. Tax st status taxable, tax class standard. I can schedule the sale price. The sale price will be offered until March 19. Inventory SKU is ABC123. Manage stock. Stock quantity. I had 12 of those available. Whether to allow back orders, allow but notify or allow, I'm gonna allow. Shipping, the weight for it is 9 kilograms. Dimensions in centimeters are 89, 55, and 78, for example. Whether to add any shipping classes, yes, I'm gonna add because it's a delicate product. It will add 5 euros for the shipping. If there are any upsell products, I'm gonna add those here. For example, if I would like to offer any of those products here, I can add them. I'm gonna show you what it does it mean. I'm gonna add some random products. And cross-sell products, if you would like to know what's the difference, then hover on the question mark here. Upsell products are the ones you recommend instead of the currently viewed products. And cross-sell products are the ones you promote in the cart page. Attributes, I'm not going to add any at the moment under the advanced. I'm not going to add here anything. Instead, I'm going to select the product category as TV. I'm going to add a product image, just a random image here. And the gallery, those four. If I need to rearrange them, then just drag and drop. All done, publish, view product, and there you go. This is my product here. Short description, long description. Those are the two upsell products here. Additional information, and if someone adds it to the cart, 
it will be displayed here. Next, let's add a variable product. All the same progress, but this time I'm gonna select it as a variable product. Now there are attributes, color, add, select terms. I have only yellow and red available. Select used for variations, save attributes, open up the variations, select create variation from all attributes, press and go, okay. Two variations added. I'm gonna exp expand both of them. Select the image for the variation. Variation price, 670. Sale price, 560. I'm not gonna set up the weight and dimensions. You can do it as before, just to keep it short. Also, you can select the stock here. Same with the red one. And save changes. Product image, let's add, let's add this one here. Category, publish, view product, it's here. If I change the variation, you'll see that the variation image is also changed. Now, if I go to the shop and scroll down, I'll see this is the first one and this is the second one here. Now, if I would like to display those two products on top, then I'm gonna go to the all products. There is a sorting option here. As you see, my TV is down below here. I'm just gonna drag it up here, this one up here. And now if I refresh it, and now you'll see those are on top. If you're using Bloxy, go to the customizer, open up product archives, and there is a type two. If I select this one here, you'll see that the layout and the look and the feel of the shop changed. This was before, now it's after, and here are the bunch of other options I can configure, but once again, I'm not gonna do it at the moment. Just publish it, go back, and done. As you see, easy peasy. Although there is something else I would like to configure with a team. First is uh, image size here and also the image size on the single product page. So once again, I'm gonna go to the customizer, open up product archives, cards options, there's the image. If you open it up, you can select the image ratio, predefined for example, one by one, you'll see it looks better. Reverse if needed, or you can add your own custom image ratio here. I'm gonna select the one by one. Next one for the single product page, I'm gonna go and open up single product, gallery options. Once again, predefined, I'm gonna select it as original. You can select also image size here. And if you go to the shop page, I'm gonna open up this one here. You'll see this image has a different image ratio because it's a landscape. Now you can set, select whether to display gallery as vertical or horizontal. I like horizontal more, so I'm gonna leave it as it is. There are a bunch of cool settings and options for the WooCommerce here. Basically, you can customize every aspect of the shop, even the width of the Add to Cart button, as you see. Okay, let's publish it. And a couple of other things for us to do. That is, I'm gonna go to the dashboard. Let's imagine that everything has been set up. I'm gonna go to the menus. This is my footer menu. I'm gonna select my main menu. If you don't know how to create menus, then, then just click on this link here, add something to the menu, for example, product categories. As you see, there are no product category selection here. Therefore, open up screen options, select product categories. I'm gonna select my consoles and TVs down below here, drag them here, save menu, open it up, and there you go, TVs, consoles, and other menus. Now almost there, just a quick overview how to change the content because everything here has been Im imported. Two options, whether I go to the page on the front end and select edit with Elementor 
or go pages here and select edit with Elementor recreate kit you have to do it only once after uh, importing your content so once again pages edit with Elementor now just click where you would like to change something if you need to rearrange something then just drag and drop if you would like to add something then just drag it here change the content update repeat for all pages that is about us and contact page for the contact form we imported WP forms this one here if you open it up this is your contact form open it up under the settings change the notification emails and the confirmation text and last thing if you would like to mess with a search engine optimization then go to the plugins add new and there are a bunch of good plugins you can use for example rank math seo seo press yoast and so on i'm not gonna go through how to install them and how to configure them but this is the way usually people handle their seo options for the site which means we're almost finished as you see this was our starting point less than 45 minutes ago and this is what we are ended up we installed a woocommerce we installed an awesome team added the content and content form there is our shop we can add products to the cart we can go and view the cart go to the checkout page select the shipping options payment options place the order if needed or do whatever we want with our site now before you go wait if you find this tutorial helpful then press thumbs up this one here and take a look at this side of the screen it contains two good videos i think you may find them useful meanwhile take care bye